All right, we yeah. are now recording to my yeah. um, hard drive. Okay, yeah, yeah. Pak Garet, I think Pak Deputy already joined with us, so I think uh, Pak Deputy will make I will say uh, something. Okay, please silicon. Yes, Pak Abib, uh, time is yours. Maybe you can make uh, if you say something about this training, please. <coughs> Pak Abib, silakan Pak Deputi. Thank you, Pak Gantar. Selamat pagi, Pak Garet. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning to everyone in Indonesia and good night to everyone in the US. Nice to see you again. Hopefully, all of you are always in in the very best condition during the time of the pandemic. I'm the I'm delighted that today we have more participation than our previous discussion on Tuesday. We decided to also invite our colleagues from other division at BPS headquarters and BPS regional office to, to get uh, involved in the implementation of our assembling frame for maize or corn and paddy. I also would like to thank uh, the USDA team, especially NAS, for an enjoyable discussion on Tuesday. Thanks a lot for your patience and valuable comments on our presentation that helped us to get some ideas on how to improve our area sampling method to estimate the, the harvested area of paddy. Today, the best team is going to make a presentation. We have a young statistician. Uh, Ms. Pia uh, would like to presentation sampling frame to Ms. Orcon. It is an undergoing to pilot project to improve that accuracy of maize harvest area data. So that you know, uh, for your in uh, information, area sampling for maize is uh, since uh, uh, 18, uh, 19. Uh, again, we, we implemented uh, the pilot project all of uh, Indonesian area. As you may notice, there is a strong indication that the maize harvest area has been suffering from overestimation. It's uh, the same condition with the paddy before we starting the implemented uh, uh, area sampling frame. It happened due to the use of a subjective measurement as in the, uh, in the case of paddy in the past. That is why we are trying to pick this problem with the same method as in Fadi. Uh, in Indonesia, it was like ATM. ATM. Every, uh, we we, we have a, uh, automatic, uh, replicate, replicate with the, uh, the same method with Fadi. As the previous one, today presentation is dedicated to serving the USD NAS. We expect uh, that you will get the extent of, of implemented so far. I think this is uh, very useful in order to link your law experience. I hope uh, you give me how to experience in your playing sampling area frame in the US with what we have done at BPS. Again, we we are more than happy to take any comment and question from the USD and us. That's all from me and have an enjoyable discussion. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks, Pak uh, Habibullah, Pak Deputy. I think uh, this, uh, I think thanks, uh, thanks again for giving us the speech. And Pak Garet, I think we can uh, continue. I, I, I just pass to you, Pak Garet. <clears throat> well, since, since we have some new members of BPS joining today, uh, I yeah. would just, uh, say to them, that uh, thank you for taking the time to join uh, this important training. Uh, we have on the call with us today uh, members of the U.S. Department of Agriculture uh, National Agricultural Statistics Service. Uh, they will be primarily listening but also asking questions today, but there will be trainings uh, in the coming weeks where they will also be presenting and uh, they are NAS, uh, we call them NAS for short, and USDA NAS is uh, one of the premier agricultural statistics agencies in the world. I, I'm sorry, 
sorry, Sarah, you smiled. The premier agriculturist. <laughs> uh, but uh, we're very we're very fortunate to, to work alongside our colleagues at NAS uh, because they really uh, are a great assistance not only to our work but to the works of agencies like BPS around the world. And uh, so uh, Sarah Hoffman will be uh, the lead for this on on NAS. She's with the international programs. She's a mathematical statistician who's been working with NAS for a number of years and is very familiar with Indonesia. And with that, Sarah, I don't know if you have any comments to say before we begin and pass it to BPS, but I will, I will turn it over to you. Well, just uh, salamat pagi to everyone. Thank you all for attending. Salamat <laughs> pagi. We look forward to hearing uh, more about what BPS does for their corn um, harvested uh, area. And uh, on, on our, um, also from USDA, NAS, uh, we have several people from our special analysis research section um, again tonight. So I'm sure that they will come up with some excellent questions uh, as they did on Tuesday night. So we look forward to the presentation. Okay, Pak uh, Kadramanto, I think uh, we're ready for a BPS uh, presenter to, uh, to begin. We look forward to the presentation. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you, Bagaret. I think as uh, mentioned by Pak Deputy, Pak Bibulo, I think uh, to this presenter is uh, Miss uh, Octavia Rizky Prasetyo. She is uh, our young statistician and last time uh, she attended uh, the ICAS in New Delhi, International Conference on Agriculture Statistics. Uh, and she has a lot of uh, experience in uh, joining with inter international uh, conferences. So I think, uh, Mbak Pia, are you ready? Yes. Yes, if you're ready, then uh, time is yours. So, so please make a nice presentation. And I think, I hope that uh, all colleagues from uh, USDA will uh, satisfy with your presentation. Okay, please start. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Pak Kader. Uh, let me share my screen first. Sorry. Okay, thank you, Pak Kader. Um, good morning for our Deputy Chief of Statistician, Pak Habib, and good morning, Pak Kader, also all colleges from BPS Statistics Indonesia. And of course, also good evening for all the colleges from USDA team. And I hope that you all doing well today. And my name is Octavia and I am from Food Crop Statistics Subdirectorate. And just to remind us that at the previous session that uh, Pak Kadir has shared about our experience in implementing the area sampling frame for PADI statistics. And today, as my deputy chief of statistician shared that today I would like to share about the replication of area sampling frame for maize statistics. And we hope that it will give a clearer picture before we began the training from USDA. And also it will be very good if we could link our experience and we would like to share about um, what we have done so far and also what we would like to develop in the near future. Um, and this is our outline of presentation today. We will begin with a brief description about the background which has already delivered also by our Deputy Chief of Statistician Production. And the second one we will um, delivered about the process 
process of construction of area sampling frame for me. And after that, we will share about preliminary results, uh, where how, how far that we can get until now. And of course, the last one, we would like to share about what challenge that we face and what we would like to develop in the near future. This is the background of why we try to replicate the area sampling frame for me statistics. As Pakadir said in the previous session that we have suffered from the, the issue of accuracy for crop statistics. However, it is not only for paddy statistics, but also for maize statistics. And this is how we calculate the production of crops in our country. We make a we multiply the harvested area with the yield or productivity where the yield has been calculated by a sound statistical based methodology called crop cutting survey. The harvested area is still using conventional method, primarily the IST method, which is very subjective and is not on a statistical based methodology. And therefore, when we reflect on the success story of area sampling frame for estimating paddy harvested area, which is already released, official release in 2018, we believe that the means statistic also need the objective measurement. And therefore, in 2019, we try to develop and conduct a pilot project uh, for doing the area sampling frame for means statistic. And of course, we have two goals. The first goal is we try to estimate the mid harvested area to be more accurate and also timely. And beside the estimation, we also would like to provide the spatial information on maize cultivation that has not been, that cannot be achieved if we use the previous methodology. And this is the maize data collection in Indonesia process. I think it is quite similar with what Pak Kadir has shared in the previous session. Um, the maize harvested area. So we use the approach is actually area, but the estimation methods, uh, it can be used the irrig irrigation block system, seed use and I estimate, but primarily they use the I estimate and it is collected by City Agriculture Service Officer. And also just like what our deputy chief statistician said that it is suffers from the overestimation and it is actually a subjective measurement. Therefore, we try to implement the area sampling frame for, for calculating the maize harvested area. On the other hand, for the yield estimation, we use a crop cutting survey, which will be delivered by our college in the next session. And, but this is just a brief description about our methodology for yield estimation. We use the float means during 2.5 and 2.5 meters. And what become the problem is actually a conversion rate that it is already outdated because we use the figure of 2005 until 2007 survey. And we believe that it also needs to be updated. But however, today we will focus on the development of area sampling frame for, our, for estimating means harvested area, which we already implement since April 2019. Okay, before we go a little bit further, I would like to share about the business process of area sampling frame. And actually it is quite similar also with the business process of the area sampling frame survey for PADI. We have four main activity in here. The first one, we construct the frame, which is the collaboration of National Statistic Office of Indonesia with several agencies, primarily the BPPT or the Agency of Assessment and Application of Technology. And then we utilize several sources of maps and the second main activity is the field observation where it is where the surveyors directly observe uh, the point observation using their smartphone equipped by android based application and the sec and the third 
activity is monitoring. It is conducted by our supervisors, regional supervisors, as well as from person conducted also by person in charge in provincial national statistics office and also in the headquarters. So the monitoring process is conducted through website and there are two focusing points uh, in, in the monitoring. The first one is we check the consistency pace between periods and the second one we also check the consistency between photo and the pace identification. And the last activity is the data processing and dissemination which is still under development and this is what we would like to find out what is the methodology in processing our data and get the estimation of harvested area for maize. And we expect that from this process, we could get the tabular and also spatial information. Uh, this is a more detailed uh, explanation about the construction of area sampling frame for maize. We try to simplify it into four stages. The first stage is preparing the supporting data on or information. There are a topographic, administrative, and land cover map, which we collected from several agencies, mainly the, the agency for spatial for land and spatial planning. And also after we collected the topographic, administrative, and land cover map, we also collected the spatial information of potential maze location, which will I elaborate later on. And uh, the next stage is creating the statistical unit, or we usually call it as grid formation with the size of 100 and 100 meter. And after that, we overlay the spatial information into the segment grid. And of course, we have to determine the label because we have several information of potential maze location, and we use the priority principle of accuracy in determining the label. After we conducted the four stages, we do the sample segment selection before the field observation. It is more detailed of the data preparation, just like um, Pak Hadir has said in the previous session that it is quite different in the development of sampling frame area for maize. Uh, the primary challenge is actually the insufficient spatial information about the land specifically dedicated to maize cultivation. It is pretty different with the development of area sampling from four party statistics because the field the party field area is provided by the Ministry of land and spatial planning of Indonesia, while the maize, while the maize field is not provided because due to the characteristic of maize itself, we cannot find the exact or land that is dedicated explicitly for cultivation of maize. Therefore, we making use of several sources of information. There are four sources. The first one, we use the results of area sampling frame for PADI. From the source, we could get the coordinate points of maize cultivation from the invitation results of the area sampling frame for PADI. From the implementation of area sampling frame for PADI, we could get information about the PADI field or dry line that is planted by maize, just like a Pakadir also has shared in the previous session that we could get several information about other crops that is that is planted in the paddy field or dry land including the maize plant and the second one we also use the information from the field identification at some point um in the early in the early of 2019 we deploy deployed a number of surveyors to took here take photographs of, of maize cultivation location to get the coordinates of land. Forces is actually come from the Ministry of Agriculture. The first one is the coordinate point of maize cultivation from the Directorate of Cereal. 
and the the last one is the polygons of agricultural potential area from Ministry of Agriculture that has and we try to combine all of this for information to construct the area sampling frame. And to be pointed out that it is not only in the polygons form, but also in the coordinate forms. After we, con we prepare the data, we, for we create a statistical unit, which is usually called a square grid. So the study area is divided into a square grid measuring 100 and 100 meter, and we usually call it a segment. And the, the size of the segment is actually smaller than the segment for paddy, as made cultivation in Indonesia mostly conducted on a small pieces of land and not as massive as the paddy cultivation. And the segment boundaries are determined based on geographical coordinates with a fixed location. And when, the, when we talk about the sample size, it is determined by considering the accuracy of data that can be accepted in the estimation at the sub-district level. After we create a statistical unit, uh, the next stage is overlaying the spatial information into segment. Just like I mentioned before that we have several sources of means potential location, uh, exactly four sources. In this stage, we overlay the four sources of means potential location into a hundred and a hundred meter segment grid so that some information points on the means potential location are stored in the grid segment. In determining the information on the means potential or each segment, uh, we base on oh, information in the overlay yeah. map. Yeah. And this is, this is the example, this is the illustration of the overlaying process. The green one represents um, uh, information that is conducted from the results of area sampling frame for paddy and the blue one is the geotech photo results from from the surveyors and when when there is an overlapping information uh, the labeling is conducted by selecting a by based on a principle of accuracy just like i mentioned before that uh, we choose the smallest code from here. Uh, the first one is the result of Paddy area sampling frame, and the second one is the coordinates of geotech photo that is conducted by our surveyors. And the third and the fourth one is the result from the Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, just for the a brief explanation or illustration, for example, if if one grid of segment, this one maybe. It has the information. The first one is the. It is the result of body area sampling frame. Also, the coordinates of geotech photo. We will give it um, as the result of body area sampling frame. It will get that classification. The labeling. The labeling is very important to conduct it, the selection of sample in the next slide that I will present. Ah, this is also a very important thing that just like the body does, we also create sub segment for the maze for the maze segment. It is to obtain the representation of observation points in each statistical unit, or we call it a segment. So each segment is divided into a fifty and a fifty meter square grid. We could see that there will be four sub-segment with each center point of a sub-segment called observation point. And this observation point regularly observed for the maze growth pace by the surveyors. And in total for each segment, these four observation points are representing the characteristics of our segment or statistical unit. And this is the 
sample segment selection. So we also use the simple random sampling with the distance threshold. However, it is quite different with the party does because we use a distance threshold of 250 meters, whereas the party use a, a one kilometers distance threshold because the size of the segment for the maze, maze area sampling frame is pretty smaller than the party. And before we go to the first step, we make we provide the sequence number for for the segment. We randomly sort the segment obtained based on the result of four sources of maze cultivation potential. Uh, the four sources, the result of area sampling frame for PADI, and then the result of photogeotech by our surveyors, and as well as the result from Ministry of Agriculture. After we provide the sequence number, the first step is to take the first sequence number as the first segment sample. Of course, this is we 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 done this thing in, at the sub district level. After we got the first sample segment, we go to the next second so to the next sequence number. And however, we have to check uh, the distance threshold to the first segment. And if the requirement requirement met, uh, we will select the second sample segment from the second sequence number. However, if not, we move to the third one. And these two steps will continue until the total allocation of segments at sub-district level is obtained. And after construction, constructing the area sampling frame as well as distribute the sample segment to the to our surveyors, we conducted the field observation. It is also in the last seven days every month, just like by the area sampling frame. And the surveyors use their smartphone equipped by Android-based applications called KSA Jago, and they have to do a direct observation at the observation points. Just to make it clearer, in here we try to illustrate the display of the application and the process of our surveyors to do this observation in the field. The blue dots we can see here, it is the position of our enumerator and the red dot here, it is the observation point and the green rectangle here, uh, the big one is the segment, boundary of the segment, which is divided into four small one, which is called sub-segments. And it is, this is how our surveyors take the photos and do the field observation in the field. However, it, they should reach the observation point. However, if they, it is, it is quite difficult if they, they find difficulties reach the observation point. They can, they still can observe the growth pace at, as long as they are in the radius of 10 meter. And after they identify what is the growth pace of that maze, also what is the condition of the, the land and take the photos. Uh, this is the, the display after they identify and take the photos of the growth piece and they can send it to the server after they completed all of the four sub segments. And it is a more detailed illustration of the application displays. Um, this is what our surveyors can track or can see if for the initial displays, it is the condition when they do not have observed any sub-segment for, for this segment. So there are four sub-segments and it is represented by the red color. After they successfully observe one sub-segment, it will turn out into blue colors However, uh, as you could see in here, I'm sorry, it is still in Bahasa, that it is send button, send button that they cannot see 
the data to the server if if they do not have they haven't fully observed all of the sub segments however after they fully observe the all of the sub segment the same pattern will appear and the legend will turn into blue and after that they they can send the data to the server and the legion will turn into green color. And this is um, the maze growth pace in general. And we know that it is quite complicated rather than compared to the paddy growth pace where we started from the emergence emergent space and then we also the, the maze also has a pace of vegetative until testing and also the reproductive when it starts to the silking process and this stage is actually should be passed by the maze maze planes before they come into the hard phase condition and however, to make it more simple and to simplify it and to make it easier for the surveyors to observe, to do the field observation, we simplify the maze growth phase in our survey into seven growth phase of maze and four other condition of observation points. There are early vegetative, and also we have final vegetative and the next one is early generative as well as the final generative and we also divide the harvest condition into three types uh, the first one is harvest for livestock and we also conducted uh, the harvest in the form of tweet and baby maize and the last one is we would like to capture the harvest in the form of dry salt maize which is a standard standard form of our calculation of harvested area in the previous method. And for other condition of observation points is we present in here the land preparation, the agricultural lane not cultivated by means, also not agricultural lane as well as the damage. And this is the observation timetable. I believe that it is also similar with the body desk. Uh, for the first one, we do the field observation in the last seven days of current month. And after that, day one to five of the following month, the supervisor, the supervisors do the validation and the data processing, we expect that we could finish all the data processing in day 6 to 10 of the following month. However, until now, we still develop uh, this process and we hope that we could get any comment or input from USDA team to develop our data processing. And this is the wave-based monitoring for the area sampling frame for me. And the, the supervisors can check regularly what is the progress of the field observation, just like uh, how many sample segments that has been observed by the surveyors. It, it is, if I am not mistaken, it is restricted in each 15 minutes, and it is a uh, a daily, a daily report of the observation. Also, they could get the percentage of realization of the sample until the municipality level, also sub-district level. This is also another feature that is very important in our web-based monitoring. From this feature that we, the supervisor can compare or check the consistency between the photos as well as the, the result of identification of surveyors. When she, just like uh, this one, the example that the surveyors identify this feature as the 
the final vegetative and this is the picture of final vegetative and however if the superficial feel feel there is something wrong or it is a quite inconsistent pretty inconsistent with the identifying results they should send feedback to the surveyor as soon as possible and fix or make um, and modify the result of the identifying and the data processing here is actually also principally it is similar with the PADI data processing however the data processing in Ms. Harf Ms. Harvested area is still in development under development which I will explain later on and the data processing is conducted from sub-district units and then aggregated the result of observation will be processed into the proportion of maize plants in each sub-district because we would like to present or estimating at the sub-district level. And we also use a binary random variable and this is the example when a surveyor observes maize plants that are in the early vegetative place, phase and what makes it different of course the, the number of sub-segment in here the number of subsegment is four. Well, in body, it consists of nine subsegment. And when we would like to estimate the early vegetative area, we will give a value, one value to early vegetative, and the others will be give value zero. And the proportion, this is, this is the next formulation, just like I said that because we only have four subsegments, so it will be divided by four. And it is the example of the proportion of maize plains in a particular sub-district and also for particular maize growing phase. In our cases, we because we would like to estimating the every vegetative so we could use it for the early vegetative maize growing phase and also for the particular sample segment. After we sum up, uh, this is the example of the calculation. After we sum up, we will get the proportion of the early vegetative in that sample segment, which is two fourth. This is the number of piece that has um, an early vegetative piece and for each number of the subsegment in that sample. It is the next the next formulation the proportion of particular maize growing pace or maybe in our cases we would like to calculate the early vegetative in a sub district denoted uh, it is denoted by P and we sum up the proportion of the early vegetative in each sample and then we divide it to the number of observed sample segments represented by n. After we got the proportion, this is what is very important or I could say essential. The proportion is used to estimate the area of maize plains for the corresponding growing phase. It can be early vegetative or maybe final vegetative. And the most, the most important one is actually the harvested of maize in a sub-district. We could see here, this is the formulation that A is actually denotes the area of maize plains for the particular maize growing pace and D, it is show the potential area of maize cultivation in a sub-districts and P is represent the re proportion of maize planes from the previous formulation. What we would like to point out also in here is that as we do not have uh, the area that is specifically dedicated for maize cultivation. Just like I mentioned before, uh, it is very hard to calculate this, this area of maize plain for particular maize growing pace. Therefore, we, we would like 
to get inputs or also insight, maybe linking our experience with USDA, how to build the potential area of maize cultivation to develop our processing, data processing. And this is our current progress. Actually, um, we could say that it is pretty delightful because uh, when we see that the sample size in total at national level is around 20,000 segment samples in each month, it means that the surveyors have to observe around more than 80,000 point observations. However, it is pretty delightful because uh, since June 2019, this is a feature of the 2019 of sample segment realization. Um, the, since June 2019, more than 99% of segment samples have been observed with CoT from these features. And also, this is the preliminary result, just like um, our goals. Maybe I should restate again that our goals is actually to provide an estimation of estimation of harvested area and on the other hand we also would like to provide the spatial distribution and the spatial distribution of maize cultivation it is very important because it can be used by the stakeholders to make a more targeted policy making the targeted policy making when it comes to the spatial context and this is um, we just would like to present an example from our results, observation results. It is a province in Indonesia, namely Nusa Tenggara Barat, and this is a result of February 2020, February 2020 observation. And in here, I try to simplify the classification, even though we could provide a more detailed classification. And here, I would like just to say that how beneficial this feature is that um, the green color, as we can see that it shows us the maize cultivation land and the red one, it shows us about the agricultural land that is not planted, planted, planted for maize. And we could get a conclusion from these features that the maize cultivation is commonly occurred in February 2020, um, commonly occurred in the eastern region of Nusa Tenggara Barat. And while on the other hand, in the western region, it is cultivated by other crops or not cultivated by for maize. And this is a more detailed illustration and uh, just to make it clearer that this pie chart is show a, a sub-district level. And just like I mentioned before that we could provide a more detailed pace, growing pace of maize, just like the early vegetative, final vegetative, and early reproductive, final reproductive, and other growing pace. After we saw the previous feature that it it is a more detailed that we could see that the cultivation in 2020, in February 2020 in Satangara Barat is actually dominated by the early product, reproductive phase and the final vegetative phase. I think it will be very beneficial for the stakeholders, especially when they would like to know about uh, the potential harvest in the next few months, in the next few months. And in here, I try to summarize what is actually the area sampling frame. Um, even it, it can be used for paddy or also for maize, maize area sampling frame. I, would, I just would like to summarize it that the area sampling frame in Indonesia actually very important because it is the first agricultural, it is the first agricultural survey that use a cost-effective technology regularly in each month where the surveyors doing the data collection using their smartphone equipped by Android desk application. And the next one is we expect that from this area sampling frame 
survey, we could get information of harvested area through objective measurement compared to the last one that we use I estimate, which is very subjective. And we hope that it could increase the accuracy of our estimation. And the third point is, as I mentioned before, that besides the tabular form, we also would like to provide the spatial data. So the area sampling frame make it possible to the availability of spatial data to show about the location of maize cultivation, as well as to show about the maize growth phase. And of course, as Pakadar have said before in the first session that uh, it couldn't be achieved without the collaboration at national level. Of course, it is the collaboration between National Statistics Office with BPPT or the, the agency of assessment and application of technology as well as with the Ministry of Land and Spatial Planning also the geogra geographical information agencies always as well as the space agencies and we also expect after the uh, after we successfully develop the data processing and estimate the harvested area and other pays we really would like to provide the estimation of the match area will also be very ben benefit and will give advantage to the government and other stakeholders and just like Fadi harvested area we would like to provide the potential of maize harvested area based on the growing pace that we observe in maize area sampling frame and actually this is the last point that we would like to restate that our challenge is actually because the unavailability of spatial information of land area specifically dedicated for maize cultivation, it is pretty different with the construction of paddy area sampling frame because we get the field, the paddy field area from the Ministry of Land and Spatial Planning. And the other challenge is the possibility of misidentification of means growth phase is still possible to happen. And the last one is, of course, because Indonesia is a fast archipelago country. We, some surveyors found a geographical, geographical difficulties and that amazing coverage require more effort and therefore we deploy a massive number of enumerators. And if I am not mistaken, the number of our enumerators is almost 3,000 in each month. And what we would like to achieve actually in the near future is the first one. This is the very important one that we would like to compute the maize potential area. And at the time being, we actually conducting studies related to computation of the maize potential area including utilizing the remote sensing. It is very important because to make our estimation accurate, we should find the base methodology or the base way to get the maze potential area for maze. And these remote sensing results, uh, our preliminary results, uh, will be delivered by our college in the fourth session of BPS presentation, I think after the crop cutting, the next session is the delivering the remote sensing results. And after that, we also would like to improve, at the time being, we also improve the monitoring business process to make the data validation become easier so that the result will be more accurate by upgrading the web-based monitoring as well as creating the Android-based monitoring system. And I think that is all uh, our presentation today. And thank you very much. I think it will give you a clearer picture about our development of area sampling frame for me. And I hope that it, we can link our experience from Indonesia experience as well as from USDA experience. Thank you very much. Thank you, Octavia. That was wonderful. Wonderful. I, I, um, 
I don't think I've said it before, but I, I think the fact that you guys are using this Android application is just fantastic. And it looks like you have really done a good job of keeping track of where your survey is in the, in the time when you're doing the data collection. So um, pardon me. <clears throat> um, we had some questions for you. If, uh, if I can get to the, the chat. Um, and uh, NAS people, please feel free to add more questions as we go into the chat and I'll just start reading them off. Um, Mike, the first question is actually from me. You said that there wasn't dedicated land to corn or to maize. Um, is there something else that's usually grown? Is it corn one year and then a certain crop the next year? Are there certain crop rotations that are common in Indonesia? Okay, thank you, Sarah. Um, there are so many varieties of crops in Indonesia. Actually, just like, so farmers usually not only plant maize in, in the dry land, especially they also plain several crops such as the cassava as well as maybe hort other horticulture other horticulture classification just like the onions and and other crops. I think yes there are several besides corn. Okay. And as a follow-up to that, do they intermix so that one field may have both corn and onions? and cassava or is it just they would plant just corn for that one uh, field? Um, some farmers actually do the mixed crops in Indonesia. We could find it in several areas, but I am not sure where areas is, where areas is do the mixed crops because our farmers is actually very creative or I could say creative because uh, some farmers can mix between the onions and then the corn or maybe the paddy and other crops. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. And um, the surveyors that go out and do the work for the corn, are they the same ones who are doing paddy as well or are they a different group? Uh, this is interesting because we do the same, um, the timetable is actually the same and we actually give a freedom for our regional office to, requ to require the surveyors and some of them are the same, but some of them is different between the surveyors for paddy and for corn as long as they, they, they give the training, the training maybe around two or three days training to give the surveyors a definition about the growth piece and how to take the how to take the photos or how to identifying the field observation in the field and yes yeah, some of them are different but some of them are so the same it depends on the regional office thank you all right um, the next question is, are maize farmers in Indonesia required to report their fields of maize to district officials each year? I mean, is there any sort of reporting by the farmer to uh, the ministry on what they're growing? Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Mark Miller, for the questions. Uh, just like uh, we have said that in the previous in the previous methodology uh the farmer do not do the reporting the, they do not report their fields of maize to district officials each year but our extension agricultural extensions uh, do the i estimates or other other methodology that i mentioned in the presentation before to estimate the harvested area each month however we have stopped the release of these numbers since 2016. I, I think the last one is 2015 because we developed the area sampling frame to give a more accurate estimation of hard faced area of maize. I hope that it could deliver the question. Okay. 
Okay. Um, how is damage determined by the surveyor? And would this take into account damage from pests? For example, if a segment or subsegment has been damaged by a pest, is there a percentage of damage to a segment that would need to be damaged in order for that segment to be reported as damaged? Yes, <laughs> actually it is uh, just like Bakadir said in the previous session, I still remember that it is quite hard to identify the damage, of, especially for the party or the current, but we actually have a uh, a standard definition of damage uh, as long as it the harvest area is less than 11 percent if i am not mistaken please correct me my team if i am i mistake about the percentage if if it is less than 11 percent it will cause as a damage but however um as our experience during the field observation usually the surveyor can detect the damage by show by see by see that in the field there are a float usually the common one is floating and they usually classify that crops as damage all right so less than 11 percent of the crop could be harvested uh, would make it damaged but if 20 percent yeah, okay, oh, I understand. That's the, you, you have a threshold that's consistent. Okay. Yeah. Uh, will more than one crop of maize be planted on the same field in the same year? And, and uh, that was Mark's question. My question is just what is the, what is the timing for corn? How many months? Uh, rice was, or patty was three months to go through the different phases. What is the corn? Um, how, how time frame for growth. Okay. okay, thank you, Sarah. So um, just like uh, the previous question, I think it is quite similar that uh, farmers can plant maize in, in the same field, maybe twice a year, twice a year, and then they can mix it. After the maize, they can plant the uh, paddy or other crops and then they can go back to the maize again and about the timetable it is quite similar with paddy it takes around four months for maize however it also depends on the types of the maize or the seeds some in some areas maybe it could be a little bit longer or maybe a little bit shorter Sarah. Thank you. Um, next question is from Rick. If field observations are only monthly in the last seven days, how do you account for all vegetative and reproductive phases of maize if the plant moves through one or more phases between observations? Okay, thank you, Sarah. Um, okay, we actually conducted in the last seven days in each month because we would like to make the timetable is actually the same between each region because we know that there are several regions in Indonesia and Indonesia is a very, very fast country. And actually, it doesn't really matter about the, what you call it, a transition, a transition between surveys, and I think as long as you, as long as you state that the observation is occurred in the seven days in each month to the stakeholders and to the data users, and we provide uh, an exact, an exact growth phase. I mean, uh, just like in the field, uh, the real growth phase in the field, just like if you, if you observe a uh, an early vegetative at, at that time, I think it is still accurate to say that it is represent the condition of that month. And before we also have several, several classification, just like the harvesting between two surveys, when we do the data processing, just like a body, we also uh, consider about the data processing about the harvest in between two surveys, just like the 
Rick is stating here that what's going on and in such conditions, we can classify it into the, 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 heart, the heart visit between two surfaces. Okay. Um, how do you define harvest suite or baby maze? Is it by the harvest stage when you do the observation or do you also look into the variety of the seed grown in that field? Well, uh, we divide the harvest just like I said before that we have the harvest for crops, yeah, livestock harvest for livestock and then harvest seeds or baby maize as well as harvest of, of in the form of shield dried shield dried maize and to define the harvest seed or baby maize besides identifying from the field uh, our surveyors and our our innovators usually know because they usually they are very open to associate or to go to the field and know the condition of the area or of the maze but the most i could say that the most um particular the most particular one to define it is by knowing the previous the previous core pace if i'm not mistaken if the previous one in is in early is in final generative or early generative, um, we could say that they are harvest sweet or baby maize. It could be shown by the, also it could be shown by the, the age, the harvest age always, as well as the previous, the previous growth phase. Okay, okay. And you guys have given us great presentations on these harvested area objective measurements for patty and for corn. Um, do you want to expand that or are you actively looking at expanding that into other crops and if so what would be your priority of crops actually it is a very difficult question sarah but uh, maybe my director or my my <laughs> team can aid in the in the next session but until now that actually we're still in the development process of area sampling frame for Maze, and we would also like to learn from your team, of course, how to develop the area sampling frame. And if it is possible to link between our area sampling frame, there is a possibility to develop the area sampling from for other crops, Sarah. Thank you. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, to my NAS colleagues, are there any more questions for tonight? Uh, Pat Cataramanto, it looked like you wanted to add something. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> and I think all the question is very, very nice and uh, it's very give us uh, like your try to hard, uh, to hard work to com uh, accomplish this one. But when the last question is very tough question actually, because this is, you know, uh, especially we propose to for the for the after after mass that we propose to conduct for the soybean, but unfortunately the government uh, say that okay you don't need so far you you don't need to conduct for the area sampling frame for soybean because you know our the Ministry of Agriculture gave priorities for these two uh, this uh, these three commodities like paddy and then maize and also soybean. But uh, our national planning agency said, because they are responsible for providing budget. So without, without any budget, without budget that uh, BPS cannot uh, conduct any survey in, in the field. So that's why uh, actually uh, we already proposed the budget for conducting uh, the soybean for uh, at the same time with the 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 maze but they said okay this time only for maze only so okay if uh, uh, the national uh, planning agency uh, didn't uh, didn't provide any budget so we do, we didn't uh, we didn't conduct any survey uh, for the soybean so I think uh, for the time being is 
only these two commodities with with uh, will be conducted uh, with will be implemented will be implemented using uh, uh, area sampling frame uh, approach. I don't know whether was, if next time that the, if the government, the central government need uh, more accurate data on other commodities, in that case, that we think we, 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 will, uh, we, will plan, we plan to uh, implement for the next, uh, for other commodities. Because we already proposed three actually, but uh, the national budget, the national planning agency gave only these two, only for these two commodities. And you know, and this is our government. Uh, and just for you, just for your information, that uh, we still uh, don't have the official figure for the maze because this is we still we uh, in the pilot in the pilot phase. Sure. So maybe in the next uh, month maybe next month or maybe in September that we have like, you know, kind of a statistical community forum uh, as us to to provide or to give explanation on the progress of uh, providing the estimation of uh, maize. So uh, unlike PEDI, PEDI already, uh, we, pro we, we already provide the official figures, but not for maize. So this is as, uh, the uh, Ms. Via mentioned during his, uh, her presentation that this is still in the in the pro in the progress. Yeah, so you will not uh, you will not find any figures on uh, on on mass in the uh, BPS website because still uh, we we still in the, the phase of uh, the pilot project. So I think we plan to release I think our result in the maybe next year in 2021. So. Okay. If this is the, uh, the the best time for you to give us like you know suggestion or maybe like this, <laughs> so that's why. So that's why we 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 uh, we, we propose this uh, this training. So uh, if internationally uh, knowledge, then I think uh, will give us uh, more confidence to provide or to release the uh, figures on mass. I think this one, Sarah. So. Don't ask more. This is a more political question, actually. Yes. yes. <laughs> so this, like, like we, are, like we are said that this is very difficult, and I could not mention. So, unfortunately, that I, I heard uh, what, uh, what her voice actually. So that's why I open my, uh, my, uh, my video. So that, uh, this is to show that uh, I'm behind of her. Okay. Okay. I understand. I understand. I have uh, two more questions. Um, okay. Uh, one is on the administrative data that you use for this the stratifying. Um, I think at the I think at the beginning of your presentation, Octavia, you you mentioned getting an administrative layer for where corn might be. How often is that updated? Like, is that um, can you get that annually? Can you get that every three months? Uh, how old is it when you get it? Okay, thank you, Sarah. To clarify, um, do you mean that in the construction of sampling frame? Yes. Okay, in the construction of sampling frame, actually, we, we do not update for the maze of course uh, we do not update regularly but for the paddy uh, the last one is we got it from the 2019 however for this maze construction area of sampling frame we the last one that we get actually it is maybe because we got it from the ministry of agriculture it is maybe around uh, the last updated is maybe around 2017 to 2018 period and therefore we make the priority principle that the result of area sampling frame for paddy is to be our priority in both the construction of area sampling frame for me Sarah. thank you thank you and the last question um, is there a YouTube or training demo video of the field observation Andrew Android app in action? So you gave us screenshots. Is there an actual video that we could watch to to see the uh, Android app in action? I think we have 
uh, we have the YouTube. Oh, our team is already shared the YouTube channel there. Ah, wonderful. Yeah, you could wonderful. check that. <laughs> Thank okay. you, Pak Hadir. <laughs> Sarah, actually, this is in, I don't know whether this is in English or in Indonesian. As far as I know that uh, no English version is available, I think. Maybe later on I will ask I Via to hard. provide the English one. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe uh, Via can can uh, translate the, the video. But we'll you see. To share the video. If, well, how about, how about this? We'll take a look at it, and if we can't figure out what's going on, we'll ask more questions. Is that okay? I think it's excellent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, NAS folks, any more questions? All right. Well, I want to say thank you very much, Octavia, for that presentation. That was uh, very well done. You've given us a lot of information and we will probably digest this information and come back with a few more questions for you, just like we did with the uh, Patty um, presentation. Uh, are there any other comments or does anyone else wish to speak before we say good night or good morning? Just say thank you uh, to Octavia for a great presentation. We really appreciate it, uh, taking the time to go through thank that. Sure. And uh, uh, thank you, Pak uh, Aramanto. We look forward to you sharing your initial corn production data with us. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe we can make a comparison later on. Yeah, we, get yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we, we will talk to you. <laughs> 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 But, but other than that, uh, thank you so much. Uh, very interesting presentation. I look forward to seeing everyone next week. Yeah, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Th yes, again, thank you all very much. Um, thank you, Octavia. Thank you, everyone from BPS. And um, we will see you Tuesday morning next week yeah. on our topic, I believe, is the crop cutting topic. And then yeah. followed by remote sensing. And then, and then we'll get into the NAS presentation. So everyone have a wonderful uh, Thursday and weekend. <laughs> and we will see you Tuesday morning. Okay. And apparently my cat really wants to say hello. I, I apologize for that. Um, thank you all again and uh, farewell. Thank you, Sarah. Good evening. Thank you, Pagaret. Thank you so much. Selamat pagi.